example. Uh, the disciples were around Jesus for three years, right? Think about this. His disciples, he had 12 disciples, and he'd go around and he'd heal people, and he'd tell them about the kingdom of God. He'd tell them that if you want to get your life right with God, you can have eternal life through me. And he's going around, and he's doing all this great stuff for three years, and his friends are all excited about it. They think that, that God's kingdom is going to come up and be set up right here on earth, and that they're going to reign, and no more of this Roman govern, government stuff where they push us Jews around. Jesus Christ, you're our king. You're our Messiah. You're the one that's going to save us. And for three years, they got that in their head. And then, now, what happens? Jesus ends up on a cross. Now, can you imagine what his disciples were thinking at that point? That's not supposed to happen. That should not be happening right now. God, you wanted to do all this great stuff. Jesus, you're going to do all this wonderful stuff. And here you are hanging on a cross. Uh, his, his disciples didn't realize that three days later, he was going to rise from the dead. Right? They didn't have that perspective. Only God had that perspective. Now, God specializes in turning dead things around. He can do that for you. Maybe he's given you a, a dream and you've been ignoring it. And it's totally possible to miss out on God's dream for your life because you ignore it. God, I have a better idea for my life than you do. Uh, Abraham believed God and the Bible says he became a father of many nations just like God promised. I want you to notice this. The fourth thing we do when we're waiting on God, besides depending on his promise, is to face the facts in faith. We face the facts. You don't ignore them. You, you, you don't fluff them off. You don't pretend that uh, obstacles exist. In Romans 4, 19 and 20, it says, without weakening his faith, he, Abraham, faced the fact that his body was as good as dead and Sarah's womb was also dead, yet he didn't waver with unbelief. God's word translation says, through faith, he regarded the facts. Now, what were the facts? That when God, he gave them this promise, when God gave him this promise, he was 75 years old. And, and, and it was a fact that at 99 years old, that his wife at 89 years old, no baby was there yet. Was he tempted to give up? Probably. But yet the scripture says that he didn't waver in his unbelief. He didn't deny the fact that it was impossible. Uh, now, let me just say this. Faith never ignores reality. It's not denying the facts. It's always facing the facts head on and still moving forward in faith. Now, let me just say, let me, let me just show you uh, a couple things. Uh, when you have a dream, when God gives you a dream, there's going to come a time of, Delay, And there's going to come a time of difficulty. And there's going to come a time of dead end. But there's also going to come a time when God delivers us from that. You know, some of you uh, still are holding out for the idea that 8-track tapes are going to make a comeback. Isn't that true? How many of you have 8-track tapes? <laughs> All right. There's a couple of you, right? Let me encourage you to give up the dream. <laughs> okay. Uh, eight tracks are not coming back. Cassette tapes are long gone. CDs are out of the picture. It's all about the MP3 and whatever's coming next. Right? Thank you, John, for holding up that cassette in the back. <laughs> uh, there's some things that we have to give up because they were not God's idea for us. Uh, there's somebody once said this about dreams. I love this illustration. Uh, he says, when the horse is dead, dismount. <laughs> How many of you are still riding that dead horse in your life? No. God wants to give you a new dream. Now, let me just show you, share just an illustration of a life from, from uh, this woman named Corey Ten Boom. Uh, she was engaged uh, at a young age to be married. And all of a sudden, the boy broke up with her. And he married her friend. Isn't that messed up? <laughs> All right. 
This woman was a godly woman. She loved the Lord. She was ready to get married. The guy broke up with her and married a friend. And she was devastated. And, and the story goes that she never married as a result of that. She went through life as a single woman, uh, but she did not reject, uh, she didn't, but she did redirect that love. Now, let me just give us this picture. She breaks up, he breaks up with her. She never gets married, but she redirected all her love and passion for something else. And I just want to share that with you. Uh, she went on to become uh, one of, one of the most influential Christian leaders of the 20th century. She influenced millions and millions of people to draw closer to God. Uh, she had this dream in her life, and it was just shattered. But she redirected it to what God might have for her. Now, it's interesting that she didn't crawl up in a ball and say, you know, God, my life's over. Uh, she, she didn't think that that was it. God had something different from her. Now, I want you to notice this. The final stage, or the final thing that I want to share with you, the number five on your outline is this. When we're waiting on God, it's important to expect God to come through. you got to expect Him to come through. you got to face the facts that sometimes life is difficulty, difficult, but that even through that difficulty, God can still show up and do something in your life. Romans 4 Verse 20 and 21, I love this passage. It says, Abraham never what, guys? Never. Doubted. Uh, for 25 years, he never doubted. He believed God for his faith and trust grew ever stronger. And he praised God for this blessing even before what, guys? Yeah. It happened. Now think about that. That's faith. You want to know what faith is? It's trusting God. That even though you can't see it, even though it seems impossible, you trust that God is still going to show up and do what he told you he was going to do. Romans, Romans says, goes on to say this. He was completely sure that God was well able to do anything he promised. You know... Uh, you know what it is to thank God after he does something? That's gratitude. Right? God, thank you for doing this in my life. You know what it is to thank God before he does it? That's faith. God, I trust that you're going to do it in advance, even though I can't see it. Romans 12, 2 tells us this. Let your hope keep you joyful. Be patient in troubled times, and pray at all times. Now, let me just give you a couple things. God is going to deliver you, but it's not up here on the screen. You might want to write this down. There are three kinds of deliverance that God might use in your life. In any situation, three times that God's going to show up in three different ways. Number one, He could show up circumstantial. That means He could show up and totally change the situation around you. He could come and do a miracle and change some things. There's another way he could show up, and that's personal. And when God shows up, he's not trying to change the situation. He's trying to change us. And so that we'll trust him a little bit more. And no matter what we're going to go through, God is going to be with us the whole way. He could change the circumstances. He might change us. He might have to change us because the circumstances won't change. There's another one, and that's ultimate deliverance. Ultimate deliverance, and that's heaven. Uh, for those of us who know the Lord, heaven's going to be a place where there'll be no more sorrow, no tears, no suffering, and, and no sadness. God could show up and change your situation. But you know what? He doesn't promise that he's going to do that every time. Nowhere in the Bible does he say he's going to do that every time. But he does say that he will walk, walk with us everywhere we go. That he will help us through that. And ultimately, what, what isn't changed here is going to be changed in heaven. When we, when we come into that uh, relationship with him, that into his presence. 
Uh, God never take promises and take away our reins, but he will walk with us. Now notice these last couple of verses. Romans 5, 2 says this. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now, now think about this. No matter what you're going through, you can still rejoice in the glory of God. James tells us that. That no matter what trial that we go through, I've learned to be content. I can rejoice in God. Why? Because he's a good guy.